Uh, videography is a powerful form of visual storytelling. You can tell your own stories from your own perspective, especially if using, uh, by using a filmmaking style. Your aim is to convey your story through uh, visual means. It allows you to capture moments, convey mo emotions, and communicate ideas through medium of moving images. And that's what we are going to be looking at today, which is uh, videography, exploring the aspect of videography. And we have in the studio uh, Khalifa Ahmed Shema. He is a director of photography. You know, I had a uh, uh, good morning, good by the way, Khalifa. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. You know, I had an issue with the director of photography, mm. DOP, which I know it was a little bit confusing. Until <laughs> I had a conversation with him yesterday, and yeah. he said that's what it's being called. Yeah. So tell us about videography in your own as, uh, perspective. Well, as you said, uh, videography is really uh, something that allows you to express your uh, uh, sometimes feelings, tell your stories, mm -hmm. and uh, express your creativity, really. And uh, that is just what uh, videography is to me. And, uh, you know, when it comes to the uh, commercial aspect of it, mm. to sell to people also. So, yes, uh, videography does all that. <laughs> okay, so before we continue, let's take a look at a video Khalifa has put together and see what he has done in his own storytelling. Smooth like me, I don't flash see notes, that's too high key. Keep it all down low, that's who I be. Levitating on the stage when I move my feet. All right, the good guy didn't know that he can move, huh? Been in my shell, popped out like Cooper. And she looked good, body rocking like Medusa. Calm like a Buddha, still popping off like Bazooka. Smooth like butter in a pan. Love her when she dance. Got me all stuck inside a trance. Hoping she don't have some other plans. Said you got a man? Yeah. Damn. Smooth like ice and that's a fact Michael Jackson nice with it I'm moonwalking She got hoops with the ice and that's a bad chick The matching jacket with it You on 10 yeah. So smooth when you walk in Slow mo hair Okay, now that is a very beautiful storytelling, you know, <laughs> I and Sumaya, we are just laughing and we can't, uh, you know, we are kind of thinking how that is possible. Yes, so, yeah. everything came out so beautiful. I mean, the question I have for you, Khalifa, is what inspired you to become a videographer? I mean, we saw that beautiful piece mm -hmm. out yeah, there and it you. came out perfect. What was thank the inspiration? You. Okay, uh, so I think it all started in, uh, in university. Uh, I started with photography and uh, what caught my attention was uh, you know the ability to kind of manipulate photos uh, any which way you want uh, mm. my inspiration was uh, back then was uh, Zach King uh, so I started I studied IT we had a um, media lab so I started learning Photoshop uh, you know taking photos and I realized, oh, okay, I have to actually get a camera. Mm. From getting a camera to, okay, so I can actually do more if I do take my own photos. And from there, it rolled into, you know, oh, so I can do more with mm. videos instead of photos, right? And I think that was uh, the, uh, my biggest inspiration back then was uh, Zach King uh, because of, you know, the amount of things he could do mm. and being a creative naturally creative person i wanted to do something like that i wanted to tell my own uh, stories to show my own skills and that was how it all started and uh, alhamdulillah we're here today <laughs> So how, yeah. how, do you, uh, how do you come up with these ideas? Like, do you write them out? Mm. Or you have people that write them out for you? Or is it just something you just wake up one day and say, oh, I want to shoot this uh, particular advert or concept, and you just go to the field? How do you come about your ideas? Well, now, now that I do mostly uh, commercial uh, shoots, uh, usually every, every commercial shoot comes with a brief. <clears throat> and then you create a, a script for it. 
Uh, so you follow that script and shoot. But if we're talking about um, videos that I shoot personally, usually they, they start from an idea, from an inspiration, from something I've seen. Uh, for example, this video you just watched uh, was inspired by a fashion shoot I saw. Mm. I was like, okay, why not make a video that is uh, so seamless that you don't really, you can't really tell what is uh, what is being, uh, you know, advertised. You you're just entertained mm -hmm. at the moment before you get to know. Oh, this is uh, this is what he's trying to sell, right? So. We planned the shootout, we wrote uh, the script, we planned uh, what, should, what scene comes after the other, mm -hmm. and then we shot from there. And sometimes it does come out the way you want it to, sometimes it doesn't, but the key is to is repetition and keep practicing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, uh, speaking about picking the, the viewers interest you know yeah. before even showing the commercial uh, thing mm. what you know as a videographer who has been in this field for the longest time mm. what are the key difference you know for uh, filming what makes it different from filming for TV mm. and also filming for other platforms say like uh, social media content mm. and also maybe films what is that key difference that someone needs to understand uh, I think uh, okay so I would say your type of audience uh, for example the uh, the type of uh, the type of audience that would watch this program are not really uh, the type of audience that you would uh, shoot probably are not the type of audience that you would uh, show a an, a five or ten seconds Instagram story or TikTok story mm. and then piques their interest, right? Probably people who watch these programs are people who are more into the long form video. Mm. And likewise with the, uh, with the social media. So people who watch social media have a very short attention span. So they things don't like that. They want to waste time. They yes. just want to see a video. So things that like that are minutes. what makes the difference. You have to know your audience. Who are you trying to sell? To, for example, in commercial uh, videography, who are you trying to sell to? So, if I am selling diapers, mm -hmm. of course, I'm not selling to babies. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, if I'm selling diapers, it's for babies. But that doesn't mean I'm going to come and say Google Gaga, and you know, mm -hmm. I am not and selling it, to them. Yeah, the so, understanding your audience. If I'm doing this for social media, uh, that means I have to consider time. I have to consider my model. If I put an older uh, man there, probably wouldn't relate to as much people as I would want to, mm. right? So I think it's, it's just all about understanding. The difference comes when you understand who you are. Uh, uh, your target audience are. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Speaking of target audience, hmm. how do you update? You know the uh, latest technologies, the trends yeah. Yeah. of what. Because that's what I wanted to ask. Indeed. You know, community like the what? How do you come up with? You know, what camera to use, the lenses, hmm. the set designs, and what have you? So hmm. how how would you come up with all that? Um, I think kind of uh, staying up to date with. Uh, uh, just as, as I'm sure you guys stay up to date with news, uh, with current news, what is happening in, you know, in the world, uh, we do the same uh, as videographers and photographers. We kind of have to stay up to date with what is new, uh, what is the latest camera. Sometimes we overdo it. We tend to get, you know, uh, the best and the greatest without needing it mm. uh, but uh, yeah all we do is just stay on top of the uh, you know any, any new updates for example if there's a usually brands announce uh, you know release of cameras before they actually let it out in the market so you already know if you are going to uh, you know get a new camera or not or if your camera does what you need it, need it to do. Um, sometimes 
you have maybe just one or two things that your camera does not do and you see a new camera being released you're like okay now i need to uh, not going into like the business part of it thinking okay is this feasible is mm. this but then basically we stay up to date with so for for for, for the viewer watching mm. and they want to maybe venture into the same kind of business that you do yeah what are the things or what are the techniques that they need to watch out for when they want to venture into let's say maybe videography or commercials or what have you techniques uh when you say techniques <laughs> like what are the what are the methods they should watch out for i mean like the steps how okay. if they want to venture into videography okay um i i think for me uh and i'm just going to speak for me mm. uh i i find it hard to to kind of give people advice on the business aspect of it why because uh mine my own journey started as you know just purely passion uh when i started i could do anything for free just to sell yourself yes not even just to sell myself just to kind of satisfy that feeling of creativity of you know putting my uh, work work yeah, out I mean, that's there. one of the reason why yes. they took advantage of artists you know? <laughs> yes. because the yes. passion comes first yes. exactly <laughs> so if you have passion for it i think putting in the work really really does uh, wonders but if you don't if it's just a business for you uh, honestly i am not the person to <laughs> give you advice on it because okay so let's yeah. let's let's change right. that right now, let's yeah. talk about your contacts uh, mm. you know in the fast pace of you know live and tv mm. how are you able to manage deadlines you know in order to deliver Ooh. and with the same <laughs> quality yeah. that people are expected well uh, I think the key to this is uh, building a solid team which uh, I really struggled with mm. in the beginning maybe I'm still struggling with but uh, I think what would really really help you is building a solid team that can deliver on your promises as a brand as a service provider. Uh, if you do that, I think it will take a lot of weight off your shoulders. And uh, uh, quality uh, delivery has to be embedded into what you do. Uh, it has to be kind of a philosophy for your brand. Or else, every single day you see people coming up and they're people are going to find other people that can do it better mm. yeah. okay. okay so how do you how do you um, what are the challenges you face you know when um, shooting commercials and how do you manage crisis in situations like maybe when you're in the field mm. you know out for uh, maybe whatever you do let's say like the documentaries that you say you do or mm. the commercials how, how do you manage crisis and the challenges that comes with it well uh, so Challenges are almost in every, every aspect of life. And it's no different with videography or documentary videography. Um, we, most of the time, what I tell myself is, uh, you probably have a little bit more time and space to sort this than you think, than you currently think. Because when something comes up, our first thought as humans is everything has gone to, uh -huh. you know, everything is gone. Uh, I don't know how to salvage, but uh, communication really helps. Uh, if, for example, you have an issue with, uh, we've had many, many times where we've shot something, uh, very expensive sets, and we've had problems, right? Uh, sometimes sound. Mm -hmm. Uh, things happen so I think the most uh, important thing was to kind of communicate right tell your client or tell your team that look we have a problem the best thing to do is not dwell on it let's find a way to fix it 
So if you have a let's fix it mindset, I think everything comes easy for you. Even though you do have to, you know, sometimes you look back and you're like, I don't know how I got out of this situation, mm -hmm. but things happen and things will happen. Even your clients are humans. So if you do communicate and be clear, I think uh, things do work out. Okay, <laughs> I am eager really yeah, yeah. to ask this question because you know there's a way that you preserve mm. pictures or videos because we could see the pictures or videos of you know the past presidents way back even before mm. we are born and all mm. that. So how, as an expert right in your field, mm. how can you preserve? this work like we do mm. over time so gener other generations can come and still see it because you know hard drives can crash anything can happen yeah. so how can how can you advise that it's the best I still ask to myself the same question to be honest <laughs> <laughs> I still do ask but uh, I think it all boils down to creating uh, something uh, meaningful uh, if the photos that we have now and videos that we have W probably wouldn't have resurfaced if they weren't meaningful, if they weren't of any value. So I do not really worry myself about, uh, you know, finding a way to keep my work alive forever. I find a way to create meaning in what I do and create value. Uh, for example, uh, I, there's this clip of... Um, uh, a certain scholar you know in Zaria that keeps re resurfacing and he is talking about the current uh, situation of uh, you know the country mm. as if he was alive and this happened more than a decade ago you know so if that video had no value it would have been lost by now mm. right Indeed. yes so this is this is my own philosophy with it. Mm. Create value, create meaning, and your work will live forever. Because right. you know, those quick videos one. came yeah. up when the, the, those people, there was no social Indeed. media back exactly. then. And so. right, quick one, let's talk about style. I mean, every artist, you know, when it comes to artistic work, mm. everyone is doing it. But what makes yours unique is your style. Yeah. So how are you able to keep your stamp in every work that you do maybe be it documentary entertainment yeah. and commercial how do you make your own brand stand out okay uh, I think for for me when we when I when I uh, registered my company uh, back in 2019 one thing that I kept in mind that I wanted to do was to maintain a a good quality of work but uh, that is aside the point. Uh, people, I have people, friends, and family who know my work, mm -hmm. and they see they see something out there. They don't know who shot it, mm -hmm. but uh, they're like, "This looks really, really similar to uh, Khalifa's work." And to be honest, I still can't put a finger <laughs> to what it is but they can tell mm. so uh, sometimes even if you can't tell people can uh, you know identify your work i have a friend that is a graphic designer salim a uh, shout out to salim <laughs> salahuddin he just gave birth a few days ago um mm. anywhere i see his work you can tell i can tell but i can't put a finger to what it is exactly mm. so for artists to explain you know what their style is for one, I'm sure my my style is more of the you know calm. I like the like even if I'm using music, it's more of the calm, mm. cool, collected you know storytelling type of uh, style. But it could be more. It could mm. be so much more. Uh, so what I would advise is you know for any upcoming videographers to kind of use their experiences. Mm and uh, you know to to kind of craft their their style their mm. own style Indeed. we don't have to yes because we draw inspiration mostly from people who we learn from and then use that and fuse it with 
our own Your personality. Your own creativity, yeah. yeah. A beautiful picture there. Thank you so much, yeah. Khalifa Ahmed yeah. Shema, uh, a video or director of a photography, I mean, yes. videographer. Thank you so much for joining us uh, Thank this Thank you morning. for having me. <laughs> of course. Mm -hmm. And of course, with that, we have to wrap up uh, the show of the 